exclamou. On a claim as a more year chip channel. Now today we've got some chips and down here is a mozzarella and chorizo filled chicken fillet. And wait. I'm now done. Love it. We are literally just gonna be having a quick chat and talking about the Premier League results. Because I thought that'd be a nice video for us to do tonight. I'll give a brief description on any of the games that I did watch. And we'll go from there, really. Um, I'm a little bit hungry. Becky was way more hungry than I am because she's got back from work. So I did dinner. Not that I'm the most hungry, but we'll eat it. seasoned with garlic and herb seasoning, peri peri salt seasoning, paprika and a bit of fenugreek, ground fenugreek, which is very nice. And then I'm just going to go like this and show you this whole chicken. Look at that chicken fillet. It's been a sort of, if you can see that, I sliced it open. You might have seen me eat this before because I have it eaten this before. But uh, filled with slices of chorizo. So usually I do pepperoni, but we had some uh, chorizo slices left in the fridge. Not a good noise. So I decided to uh, do that. It smells divine. Sorry. Chicken, season it with salt, pepper, paprika. Then you cut it open. They're more just like roast potatoes, aren't they, really? That's hot. tonight that might be a fun thing to do maybe maybe i will maybe i won't no not tonight because my video's out and i don't like streaming when the video's out but yeah i've been playing a hell of a lot of world of warcraft at the minute obviously off from work recovery is going okay uh, one or two slight issues that i'm having with my leg but the actual hip itself seems okay it's just more slight complications with the wound. The wound's getting a little bit itchy, which if you guys know that just means it's healing very well. It's stitching back together the skin is. And just yeah. All in all the recovery's going okay. Um the other complication is the top of my thigh hasn't come back to life yet. In fact it's the whole nerve itself hasn't come Wit, like if you, unless you can't feel it, you can't actually feel your nerve. But I can feel just like a like a long stem through my to my leg that's just numb. And then anything that's tapping on that, I feel it in my kneecap. So yeah. And I'm just assuming that's because the like the signals are going, or oh, we can't feel it here. So let's tell somewhere that can feel it that something's happening. To alert me, because that's what your nerves are for. But yeah, other than that, the recovery is going okay. Like I said, I've been playing a hell of a lot of World of Warcraft, really getting back into it. I <coughs> had maimed a druid. Shaman. 
for pretty much of the new war within. And then whilst levelling to 70, uh, my good friend, my colleague at work, said, why don't you just give something else a go as well. I, I was already level 70. Said I at least want to level one or two, maybe three characters to max level. Give it a go. So I did a frost mage. Realised post patch that I prefer the frost mage to the shaman. So, yeah, I just had decided to focus on my mage. Then he came on the other night and said, if you try warrior, and I said no. And then that's when I created my earthen character and leveled to 70 with the warrior. Which you guys didn't click on because it's a way underperforming. World of Warcraft content, you guys aren't used to that, so I wouldn't expect a lot of you to watch it anyway. Also, I got to lag level 70 in that video, you will see if you want to go and watch it. That I got to level 70 by only flying, I didn't kill anything, didn't do any quests or anything like that, and managed to get to level 70 just by flying around and exploring. And I had so much fun doing that. However, it then meant that at max level, I had no gear, no equipment, no swords, no axes, no maces, nothing. So shit, I then managed to slowly work my way into getting some gear and then the other night so when we had been Saturday night Joel hopped back on and we got chatting again and he said how are you finding it and I was loving it I said you know what this is the most fun I've had with a character in a long time I'd found, like, casters, like mages, shamans, and warlocks, things like that, would be my go-to. It's a way just to keep out of the way, not really take too much space or more. You know, I can play casually. Warrior is not something you can really play that casually. In my opinion, anyway. But now I'm, like, probably getting back into it, I can sort of... Joel himself has been playing Warrior. So I was like, cool, right, you got any tips? And he said, oh yeah, just wait for it. So he sat for like an hour with me the other night, showing me what sort of like rotations of abilities to do. This is good, by the way. Right. Just take a look at that. something <laughs> anyway oh yeah yeah so he sat there and was like have you got any macros set up which I hadn't by the way like I know people use macros again I was much more on the side of casual gaming to even think about it and he said honestly I will literally send you what you need to copy and paste and then you saw what I was like oh fair so I was hitting maybe on a dungeon or a raid boss, maybe about eight, nine million. If it went on for a long time, maybe twelve million. Okay. With like five hundred K DPS ish. Now he kept me the setup and said, try that. 
this is with like base gear as well. This isn't like I, I couldn't even get into heroics at this point. So for anyone that like knows about item levels and stuff like that, but I couldn't even do heroic dungeon. That is not even raid. I hit twenty seven million damage. Mental. It is basically triple my output. And I was just laughing. I just, you know, I was typing to him going, ah, 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 this is jokes. And he said, I'm having so much fun, Luke. He actually sent me a screenshot. He was number one in a heroic raid for DPS. I think he did. Mental. Absolutely mental. But he's like now fully geared up and everything and he said, trust me, when you when you get geared up, you're gonna just love it because it just scales better and better. Anyway, that's the World of Warcraft stuff I want to talk about. So now I'm basically maining a warrior. And the other two have taken a bit of a back burner. And I'm fully focused on crafting items, getting the right items for him. Dibbling, sorry, my bad. Dibbling. I think Sibley plays for Derby County, doesn't he? Uh, Dibbling. Uh, absolutely fantastic of a player. A little bit of refining, a little bit of experience under his belt could be an absolute class player. However, after an amazing start, absolute capitulation from them. A red card. Gold from Delict, gold from Rashford, and gold from uh, gold from Carnage. Now, I've seen Delict come under a lot of fire recently. I I quite like him. I rate him quite highly. And from what I can see, a lot of the a lot of the criticism he's been getting recently is justified, but not to the extent he's been getting it. game to get himself back into the you know he scored from a corner was it a corner or a free kick a set piece anyway really 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 solid at the back saved Man United once or twice and just absolutely silenced all of his haters so it's just one of them Just hoping they didn't get like nine put past them. He 
you know, losing one or two nil away at Liverpool is never a bad thing in my opinion. Like Liverpool are strong at home anyway. But to come out of the game with a one nil win, absolutely phenomenal. Didn't deserve it. Liverpool squandered a lot of opportunities. Forest just clinical on one the, the one chance they needed to be. So it is what it is. Hudson at all yet again. I think Forrest started with Chris Wood up top, uh, Dominguez left wing, and who did they have a right wing? Uh, Ellie Anderson, sorry, Dominguez right wing and Ellie Anderson left wing. I personally think they need to just start with Alanga and Hudson Adoy. I think that needs to be the starting uh, attack. I'm assuming they didn't start because of and the fact that you play them against the teams you think you're going to beat, there's no point sticking them on against Liverpool, thinking that they might clinch a winner. You might as well, like you say, keep their keep their expertise and keep their quality for the last 40 minutes. If if you lose in five nil, don't make a difference anyway. If you put them on or not, if it's nil nil, they can have the biggest impact off the bench, and it showed. Absolute quality of them too is unbelievable. In like so, those two players specifically for me, they could be playing for any mid-table club. I don't think you'd ever see a Langer and Hudson Odoi playing for the same club if they were to go to the likes of your Crystal Palaces or your your Brightons. Maybe even your West Ham. But they both saw a project at Forest. And thought, yeah, why not? And I'm, I'm here for it. So yeah, one nil win. Um, Man City beat Brentford 2-1. I think Brentford went 1-0 up. And then Haaland, yeah, again, two goals. Fantastic. Fulham and West Ham 1-1 one, one, didn't see the highlights on that, so I'm not entirely sure, but Raul Jimenez with an early goal. Looks like Fulham actually dominated more possession, more shots, more shots on target. But then a dying equaliser in the 95th minute, that's got to be some tough to take. That's got to be quite tough to take. Crystal Palace and Leicester, I've got a lot of uh, colleagues who are Leicester fans because I work sort of Leicester way. in the group chat saying, you know, come on Vardy, unbelievable, bloody hell, here comes, uh, and that's because he scored first, still a quality player in there, you know, there was a lot of questions asked at the start of the season, whether he'd be up for it, and for another season, you know, he's aged a little bit since he was in the Prem, maybe he's not quite where he used to be, but he looks up for it, he looks absolutely up for it, and by the way, this is the last roast potato crisp thing. Sorry, so just after the first half, Leicester City then made it 2 0. And then within a minute, Mateta scored a goal. So it uh, drew it back to 2 1. And then they had a 90 second minute penalty to equalise Crystal Palace, did. Which, if you're a Leicester fan, that's going to be pretty hard to take. But in the grand scheme of things, a point away at Crystal Palace, nothing to shout about. Same for Ipswich, 0 0. Brighton might not be like the biggest upset in the world. Brighton looks like they were dominating 21, got, uh, 21 shots, 69% possession, just all over. Ipswich just couldn't find the goal, simple as that. I mean, Forest, by the way, are in seventh place, level with Brighton, one point behind Aston Villa and Liverpool. What are Forest doing up there? We have 
Aston Villa, who yet again for Everton, Everton went two goals up again. And then conceded three goals in the second half. Two games in a row. That's happened now. Letting a two goal lead slip. They need to fix up something because this can't keep happening. I know Aston Villa are, Aston Villa are quality. But you can't let a 2 0 goal slip that easily. It's as simple as that. Um, however, Duran's goal, John Duran's goal, was sublime, absolutely exquisite. Left foot, sort of on the turn, took a touch. You know, he, or he had the ball at his feet, turned, took a touch. Just struck it so well. Outside the foot, curved. Near post, top bit. Oh, it was sublime. Y- again, you can't defend those, and you certainly can't save those. So it's no one's fault that that went in. But to let to let a two goal lead slip is terrible. Now Chelsea Bournemouth, that for me was one of the worst Chelsea performances I've seen in a long time. So gritty. I mean, broke a record for fourteen yellow cards in a game, which is not a record you want to break. Truthfully, um, however, what I will say is Anthony Taylor is just a knobhead. I didn't agree with a number of the other cards. I think a few of them you could probably let go, but okay, it's up to the ref. I'm not going to berate him for it. None of the yellows were really to do with foul play or incidents. It was it was all dissent and all questioning what the ref's blown for. And on many occasions, I agreed with the players. I was like, why is he blown there? I think there was one incident. What was it? Oh, I was speaking to someone yesterday about it. Yeah, there was an incident where Chelsea went... F- no, what was it? Brian had the ball. player was fouled. Let's call it a foul. And Chelsea won the ball. The ref waved play on. Um... We looked to counter, and then he just blew the whistle and brought it back and gave Bournemouth a free kick. Now, whether it was or wasn't a foul anyway, I, I was just like, you can't you can't so wave play on. Let the game play on and then bring it back when it's the, the other team that, have, that you've called for. Either give them the free kick and say, no, I think it was a foul. If he gets it wrong, he gets it wrong, but he's made the right, he's made a decision there and then. Don't let the possession turn over, then carry on and just then bring it back and go, ah, I might, I might, I might got that one wrong. It's, it's very, very strange. I was just like, well, what's the ref do? He had no control over the game. And then he ended up booking, like, one or two Chelsea players for questioning him. I'm like, well, of course they're going to be a bit like, why? What the fuck's going on? If, if, you've, if you've made a decision that's outside the realms of when you should have made the decision. Do you know what I mean? And then to book him for the dissent rather than saying, look, I got it wrong. He's corrected me. Move on. That's all it needed. We're asking for better communication from the referees anyway. It's not happening. And actually, it's getting worse. It's getting to the point where it is zero tolerance to questioning anything they've done, which, okay, I'll admit, a lot of the time players do need to, you know, respect the referee a hell of a lot more. I will 100% agree on that. But not being able to question a decision correctly, I think, is going the wrong way about things. But that's maybe a discussion for another video. Then we move on to Tottenham Arsenal, which was yesterday. <sighs> a game where I'd happily prefer a 3-3, if I'm being honest. Like, I don't want neither of those teams to win. But I also want it to be an entertaining match. Neither of those statements were true. Arsenal coming away with a 1-0 win. Definitely deserved. Tottenham at home losing to your rivals in a North London derby is unacceptable. Poster Coglu is, is ropey at best. I think he, he he didn't go there with a proper game plan. I think he, he used the media too much to try and quieten things down. Like, he said in the media that, you know, these sort of 
rather for is don't get to him. He doesn't let them play mind games and affect him and stuff like this. But if you're saying that to the players as well, you're just putting them on a back foot. All you're doing is saying to them, uh, forget about it. And then when the game comes, and like Arsenal have done, and what you're probably going to see with Arteta, he gets them G'd up, he gets them ready for it, he gets them active, he gets them being the aggressor. And within 90 minutes, the aggressor's going to score the goal. Unless Tottenham were able to simmer Arsenal down and fully take control of the situation, which they never did, by the way. It was very end-to-end, very, very gritty. Very boring game. The first half was terrible. It was just not a lot happened, bar a few scuffles. And just, it wasn't good football either. And again, I could understand Postacoglu's arguments. If they were going there, or if, if they were if, if they were inviting Arsenal onto them because of a game plan, but they didn't. They just allowed Arsenal to just dictate a lot of what happened. Because they were up for it, they knew the risks. They were like, I'm not going to let us concede a goal. And what I am going to do is try my damned hardest to get the ball forward and to score a goal. And eventually the quality came through, so... Now, if this was at the Emirates, you'd say fair play. You know, Arsenal at home, 1-0 win against the Rivals. Good day for them. Fair dues. But it's in Tottenham's backyard, man. If you're a Tottenham fan, you've got to be sat there thinking that was very unacceptable. And then Newcastle Wolves. I I said to someone yesterday that Newcastle were going to win about 4-0, which didn't happen, by the way. And he said, no, I can see Wolves winning this. And after the first half, I was inclined to agree. Wolves were so much the better side in the first half. Creating lots of opportunity. Definitely, definitely counter-attacking way better than Newcastle were even attacking normally, to be honest. And then, the second half came about. The Wolves players looked very tired. Some absolute moments of magic from Fabian Shaw of all people. Did it go down as an own goal? No, it went down as Shaw's goal. Fair play. Takes a touch. He does an absolute Vincent company and just boots it. Deflection off Dawson's head into the goal. Great goal. Harvey Barnes as well. What a finish that was from Harvey Barnes. Great, great goal. Just finds the ball on the left-hand side. Very patient with it. With it. Makes maybe one or two passes. And then sees these two defenders and he thinks, I look left. And then I'll go through them because they're thinking, look left and I'll play it. So they've stepped towards him. And he's gone, I'll anticipate both of them. Flick the ball through both of them. And then I've just got space. It takes one more touch. Perler into the top bins. But do not let that overshadow Lamina's goal. What a great bit of counter-attacking football you saw there. The ball absolutely played for. I think it was like two or three passes before he got into their box. And then the ball across. The dummy. Dummy was fantastic. And then just a nice tap in for Lamina. Brilliant, brilliant run. Again, I know we see a lot of tap ins and we go, oh, he's only a tap in. The team play there was fantastic. But Lamina knows what he has to do. Like, we all mock tappings as goals, you know, like your hearts, your messes, or whoever it is. Yeah, we just go like tappings. They're tappings for a reason because people know the position they need to be in, the run, and just the uh, the knowledge of Lamina to just hold his run by maybe half a second. So when the ball's played across, if anything goes wrong anyway, he can then time it so that when he's in the middle of the box, he's got the ball. And that is what's needed from your central attacking midfielders. Or Lamina's case, is not really the attacking midfielder, is he, usually? Oh. Uh, Lamina, oh, he's actually playing right wing back. Oh, no, right mid. He played right mid yesterday, fair play. So, yeah, it is what it is. Um, there are all the results. Uh, we've got some games going up midweek. So, tomorrow night, we have the Champions League starting. And the new format for the games is... The Champions League games that are being played Tuesday to Thursday. And then 
next week is Europa League Tuesday to Thursday. And then the week after is Conference League Tuesday to Thursday. And then somewhere in that, so this week, next week, when did Chelsea play again? Because our first game is against Ghent, 3rd of October, yes, ours is on a Thursday. So Champions League games have happened. So from tomorrow to Thursday, then from the first to the second, then on the Thursday, Chelsea have got their games. I'm not entirely sure how it's going to work on like TNT and BT or whatever you want to call it nowadays. I don't know how they're going to choose which games to show or whether they're just going to be all available for you guys to watch. My mum did mention actually. That's wicked. Fair play. So you can watch a lot of them on um, Amazon Prime. So tomorrow at 8 o'clock, it's AC Milan versus Liverpool on Amazon Prime. Then on the 1st of October, Arsenal PSG. They do say it's 17 top pick matches every Tuesday night. Up to and including the semi finals. So basically, I think all the Tuesday night games are going to be played on Amazon Prime. Is that right? So if I click on. Where is it? If I click on tomorrow's Juventus PSV TV and streaming TNT. So some of them are on BT, some of them are more on Amazon. Anyway, either way, that's fantastic. Milan Liverpool tomorrow night, some really good games. Atlanta Arsenal, Monaco Barcelona, Atletico Madrid, RB Leipzig, PSG Girona, Real Madrid Stuttgart, Young Boys Aston Villa. But that Milan Liverpool game looks big. And that's going to be fantastic. And this is Liverpool away from home. Now remember, it's all one big group, so really these points are crucial. Anyway, I hope you guys have enjoyed this. It's been a nice little uh, 30 minute video. I hope you guys, I hope you guys have a nice night. Or may have already fallen asleep like actually.